Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guide video on points of intersection featuring an A over X squared graph on the Casio FX CG50. We're going to use the CG50 to find out information and help supporters answering this particular question, although part C and part D the show and hence we will be doing some non-calculator methods as well, but we can use the information from the CG50 to help support the answers that we find from those sections. Let's have a look at part A. On the same set of axes, sketch the graphs of y equals 9 over x squared. That's our a over x squared graph. And then we have a second graph, y equals 4x plus 13. That's going to be a straight line. Okay, so let's draw this on the calculator before we go forward with any of the other sections. So it's navigate down to 5, graph, and press execute. And I'm just going to use y1 and y2 here. That will give me a blue colored graph for 9 over x squared and a red colored graph for 4x plus 13. So just carefully input those two graphs that we have. Remember you can use the x theta t button to input an x value. Once you've inputted 9 over x squared press execute and that will automatically navigate down to y2 so we can input 4x plus 13 and execute once that's inputted. It will automatically navigate down to y3 but we don't need to input that so we won't worry about that. And you can see that the equal signs have been highlighted on Y1 and Y2, which means they're going to be included in our drawing, which is exactly what we want. So let's press F6 and draw the graphs. Now, if your graph is like mine on the default setting, you might not see very much of the graph. So we might need to change what we can see on screen by pressing F3, V window. And I'm just going to change this by pressing F3 again to the standard layout. That will mean both X and Y axes go from negative 10 to positive 10 maximum. And if you press execute, come back to the menu screen, F6 to draw again. You can see we can see a little bit more on this, but it helps to navigate up here so we can see a little bit more on screen. You can see that the blue graph, which is 9 over X squared, ascends quite high there. But you can also see that the red line, which is the straight line graph, y equals 4x plus 13, crosses the graph at three places. And that's going to be very important for part B, which we're going to do in a moment. So if you wanted to sketch this particular graph, you could use what's on screen at the moment as your prompt. Let's just have a quick think about the blue graph. That's y equals 9 over x squared. That goes above where we can see on screen there. In fact, that's going to continue to go up and up, get closer and closer to zero, but it's never actually going to reach zero. We've got an asymptote at zero. Why? Because if we had zero as our x value, we'd have nine over zero squared, and that's not mathematically defined. So we're only going to have the graph gradually getting towards zero, but never actually touching it. And it's the same with the x-axis as well. That is going to be an asymptote too. You can see that the graph is getting flatter as we approach negative nine and nine on the x-axis. Why is that? Well, if you think about it, if we square a value, we always get a positive result, whether that's a negative number that we squared or a positive number that we squared. So we've got positive nine over another positive number. That's always going to give you a positive result. So we're not going to have any part of the blue graph in the negative section of the graph. So there we go. We can use that information there and what we see on screen there to, to draw a sketch of these particular graphs. And it should look very similar to what we have on the calculator. Part B, write down the number of real solutions to the equation 9 over x squared equals 4x plus 13. Well, when the graphs equal each other, what we're talking about there is points of intersection, which is generally the theme of this video. So we're thinking about where the graphs touch each other or cross each other. And you can see that there are three points where the red straight line 4x plus 13 meets the blue graph 9 over x squared. And at those three points, the graphs are going to be equal to each other. So they would represent a solution to 9 over x squared equals 4x plus 13. So what we can say is that there's three real solutions to that particular equation. Why? Because we've got three points of intersection, which we can clearly see from the graph that we've got. Now, part C, show that you can rearrange the equation to give, and then we've got x plus 1, x plus 3, and 4x minus 3 equals 0. This is essentially a non-calculator method in order to do this. We can get the information from the calculator in terms of solutions, which we will do to verify our answers to part D, but it's not going to help us to do any algebraic manipulation for us. The CG50 can't do that, so we will have to do that ourselves. 
So the first step is to take 9 over x squared equals 4x plus 13. What I'm going to do is multiply both sides by x squared in order to get that x squared from the bottom there. So that's going to leave me with 9 equals 4x cubed plus 13x squared. The next step that I'm going to do is to subtract 9 from both sides. The reason why is that I can then get a cubic equation that's equal to 0 and then we're in a position to be able to rearrange it or factorise it as shown in part C. So subtract 9 from both sides, 0 equals 4x cubed plus 13x squared minus 9. Now in order to factorise this, it's going to be helpful to divide by one of the factors. I'm going to take one of the factors that's given to us from our show that in part C. I'm going to actually take the 4x minus 3 and divide that into 4x cubed plus 13x minus 9. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that I prefer a grid method to do long algebraic division. So I would set up 4x and minus 3 on the left hand side. And we'll start with the first term, which is 4x cubed. I'm going to put that within the grid here. What would I need to multiply 4x by to give me 4x cubed? Well, that's x squared. So I'm going to place that at the, at the top. That's going to be part of my quotient. And then I'm going to multiply x squared by the term that I've got on the bottom there, minus 3, negative 3. That gives me minus 3x squared. Let's compare that to the number of x squareds that we've got. We've got 13x squared in our original equation. What would we need to make... 13x squared if we had minus 3x squared well we'd need plus 16x squared so I'm going to write that up here and again just comparing that with 4x what would I need to multiply 4x by to get 16x squared well that's another 4x so it's plus 4x as part of my quotient 4x times negative 3 that's going to be minus 12x I'm going to have that on the bottom now if we look at the original we've got no x terms in our original it just goes from 13x squared to minus 9 so therefore I would need plus 12x to give me 0x. So I have to write plus 12x in. What would I need to multiply 4x by to give me 12x? Well, that is positive 3, so plus 3. That's the last part of the quotient. Plus 3 times minus 3 gives me minus 9. And that is the last term that we have there. So there's no remainder. That's brilliant. It is a fact. We knew that already because it already showed us that. So we were expecting that result. From the quotient there, x squared plus 4x plus 3, what we need to do is to factorise that. Now you can use the CG50 solver if you're not sure. I think this is relatively easy to factorise by hand. So it's going to be x plus 1 and x plus 3. In fact, we knew that already because we can see that in part 3. And also we have the factor we divided by, which is 4x minus 3, and that's going to equal 0. So there we go, that's enough evidence that we know that we can rearrange 9 over x squared equals 4x plus 13 into what's shown in part C. Now part D, the critical word here, here is hence. Hence determine the exact coordinates of the points of intersection. So again, we are going to have to do some writing here, but what we're going to do is actually find the solutions that we uh, we want here, the points of intersection from the graph first. So we're already going to know the answers, and then it's just a case of being able to show how we can get those answers using our rearranged equation from part C. So if I press F5 on the graph, and then I want intersect for intersection, you can see that has zoomed to the first point of intersection there, x equals minus 3 and y equals 1. So minus 3, 1 is going to be one of our answers for part D. That is the coordinates of one of the points of intersection. And if you navigate right, then that should take you to the next one, which is minus 1, 9. That's going to be another point of intersection. And then finally, right again, we can go to the topmost point of intersection. That is x is 0.75 or 3 quarters, y is 16. So let's see where those come from. Well, I'm going to take each of the three factors in turn. x plus 1, well, if that equals 0, then x would have to be minus 1. And what I can do to find my y coordinate is to put that into either of the previous equations that I've got at the top there, y equals 9 over x squared or y equals 4x plus 13. I'm going to choose the former of those. So y equals 9 over minus 1 squared, minus 1 squared is 1, 9 over 1 is 9, so y equals 9. So our coordinates are minus 1, 9. We knew that already from the calculator, but we've been able to essentially show that from using the factors that we had from part C, and that is the bit that the hence refers to in part D of the question there, so we've satisfied that condition. 
So we're just going to do the same with the other two factors. So x plus 3 equals 0. Therefore, x equals minus 3. y equals 9 over minus 3 squared. Minus 3 squared is 9. 9 over 9 gives you 1. And so then our second coordinate is going to be minus 3, 1, as we already knew from the CG50. And lastly, we have 4x minus 3 equals 0. So therefore, x is going to equal 3 quarters for that to be true. y equals 9 over 3 quarters squared. 3 quarters squared is 9 over 16. 9 over 9 over 16 is 16. And perhaps you might need to use the run mode in the CG50 to work that out if you weren't sure. But we knew that it was going to be that anyway, because we knew that was the final point of intersection from the FX CG50. Our final coordinate for the point of intersection is 3 quarters and 16 or 0.75 and 16. So there we go. A lot of work for that particular question, but it shows how the CG50 can not only give us answers to support the working out that we're doing, but also help us in terms of drawing sketches where we should be drawing various things and the nature of the graphs, which is very important. We could tell there from the graph that we had asymptotes at uh, x equals zero and the x-axis there. And for part D, we could even get the solutions from finding the intersection points on our graph. We just needed to tie that in to part C because of the word hence there. So we still need to know how to find it, but the CG50 gives us that extra support, that extra bit of verification that we are correct in what we found there. So there we go. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time on The Calculator Guide.